Up program. We're really excited to have you here. So first, I'd like to start off by introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Austin Erickson. I'm the Animal Science and Pre-Vet Admissions Counselor. So hopefully all of you know me by now. I'm that annoying person that emails and calls you all the time. Oh, not annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have with me here Dr. Peck. Hi. And then I have um, current student, senior in the program, uh, Ben Bennett. Hi there. So hopefully um, you guys are all accepted students. We wanted to target this chat for you guys to answer your specific questions. Um, and first, I'd just like to talk about a few things on the admissions end. So there is the enrollment deposit. So it is $100. If you haven't paid that already, basically it allows you to sign up for housing, as well as starting the meal plan, and also starting the registration date process and the orientation. So those RSVPs are posted on the website. So you can definitely um, find those links in RSVP for the specific dates. So I'm going to open this up for um, basically Dr. Peck and, Dr. and uh, Ben Bennett here <laughs> to uh, answer some questions and, and go through a couple programs. What can they do? If they have any questions, what can they do? Well, basically, you can tweet to at UF Admissions, um, or you can hashtag AskUF. And also, you can just type it right in, and we'll answer your questions. And I'm so glad that at Austin went ahead and had that question because I wasn't going to be able to answer it. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to go ahead and tell you just a little bit about the pre-vet program. And please feel free to jump in there and ask questions anytime you have them. Um, you know, the animal science um, pre-vet uh, program is actually, you know, it's, it's one strand of the animal science program. The animal science program has the three strands. It has the general production strand. It has an, a science strand, which has a little bit more chemistry than, than what the uh, production strand does. And that's for students who really want to go into reproductive physiology or nutrition, maybe into a graduate program in animal science. Um, and then, of course, there's the animal science pre-vet strand. And that has the most science. Um, and is specifically geared for students who are looking into applying to a college of veterinary medicine and wanting to be a veterinarian. Um, the program does have some um, standard courses that, that all three strands take. In other words, in the freshman year, you go ahead and take animal, intro to animal science, you take um, the animal handling classes, you also go ahead in the sophomore classes, class take um, animal nutrition, animal reproduction. Um, there is a uh, choice in which um, genetics class you take. If you're a pre-vet, you're going to want to go ahead and take the biology genetics because it has more molecular genetics. That's what the schools want. And the other two strands can take the animal science um, repro or genetics. There's more of a, an applied genetics. Um, and then, of course, everyone takes the senior seminar. Um, so it really depends on which strand that you're in. Um, there are production classes that you can take. And just this coming fall, we have added labs to those production classes. And when we talk about a production class, you can learn about a particular species. In other words, we have dairy production, beef production, sheep production, swine production, and horse production. And there are labs with each one of those, except for horse production currently. Um, so. Um, the first two strands would go ahead and take three of those courses. The pre-vet, the animal science pre-vet strand would take one. Um, then, of course, there's going to go ahead and be the animal science electives, which are which gives you a choice of courses that you can go ahead and expand your curriculum in whichever direction you wish to go. Because there's there are um, advanced nutrition's, advanced reproductions. Um, there are management classes there. Um, there are um, classes in um, small animal diseases, large animal diseases, um, equine preventive medicine. I mean, that runs a whole gambit. So you need 15 hours there. And then, of course, we have the general university requirements that are the 33 um, general education requirements. So all in all, we have a very, very good curriculum that meets the needs of the vast majority of schools. And we have a good history of getting students into both graduate schools, um, veterinary schools, and also into the job market, which is another very important thing we want to go ahead and do. Um, students, as far as what they can expect from the program, we try to go ahead and we advise them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, and each of us, as far as the animal science faculty, there's a few biology faculty, um, they're going to go ahead and be able to give you as a student 
one-on-one -on -one advising to help help you go ahead and plan your academic program. Um, you also can go ahead and expect, of course, the hands-on, and the hands-on is a known element of our curriculum, and you're going to have an element of that in each of the four years, and I think probably Ben's going to go ahead and speak to that, because obviously, even though I taught a lot of those classes, he's actually been through them, so he maybe will tell you the real lowdown. Um, so, but we also go ahead and pride ourselves that we're trying to put students into more and more clinical internships, maybe with a veterinary practice, maybe with a zoo, with a, um, um, really a, any number of things. We've had students go ahead and go off into um, other countries as far as studying abroad, like in South Africa, um, uh, Poland was another one, and of course Japan. the Japan and also um, we have students that go to quite often to either Australia or New Zealand. Um, and so we're, we're helping students go ahead and coordinate that. And we have offices that are specifically geared for that. So all in all, we have a lot of aspects of our program that is really, really interesting and would really help you achieve your goals. But before I go ahead and say anything else, I'm going to introduce Ben Bennett. Ben is one of my seniors, and he's from Mount Vernon, Ohio. He has been except he's a dual animal science pre-vet, biology and chemistry minor, um, and he also has been accepted for this upcoming year into um, Kansas State College of Veterinary Medicine and Lincoln Memorial College of Veterinary Medicine, and I think he's going to Kansas, I think. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ben. Sounds good. Well, hello, hello everybody. Um, like she said, my name is Ben Bennett. Um, this is my fourth year and senior year here. Um, while here at Finley, I've enjoyed a lot of stuff. Um, I particularly, I came from a small town, so I really like the small town feel of uh, Finley in that, um, aside from other, some of the other places that I wanted to go to. Um, Dr. Pett kind of touched on the hands-on experience that we really try and focus on here. First year, there's a lot of the animal handling classes, which you guys will have a lot of fun with. That still probably holds a spot for my most favorite class thus far. Um, through the four years that I've been here. In that class, you guys get to do a lot of, uh, of the care for the animals out at the farm, um, whether it be the babies or the older ones. Um, you get to do everything from dehornings, vaccinations, castrations, everything like that. Uh, after that, you guys you get to go out and be part of the feedings. Uh, those are through your, animal, your reproduction and your nutrition classes. Um, and you feed once a week, and you also have a weekend they have to feed um, and the reason I'm telling you all this is just what I really like about Finley is the fact that you get so much hands-on experience um, all through the four years that you're here. Um, the third year, again, your production classes like Dr. Peck was talking about, they have been held out at the farm, but now with the upcoming labs that are also required with them, it sounds like you're going to be out in the, farm, out in the barn a lot more um, than even what I got to do. And then she was talking about the internships that you guys will get to do as well. I am currently doing one of those um, with Dr. Kearns in Kenton, Ohio, uh, doing large animal um, shadowing him on large animal rotations. So uh, the hands-on experience here at Finley is just really awesome and it's really helped me um, as well. So One of the reasons that we emphasize the um, farm um, interaction, and, and sometimes you might think, well, you know, feeding, cleaning, the best thing I can tell you as far as those of you that may be from um, urban environments, and, and to be honest with you, that is the majority of you, um, in the fact that you have to understand and know normal animal behavior before you can recognize what is abnormal. And if you've never seen a normal healthy animal, and that is the vast majority of what we have out at the college, at the university farm, then you know, you're not going to recognize a, a sick one. Ben, why don't you say the type of animals that we have out of the barn currently? Um, out of the farm we have, I want to say upwards of close to 500 animals ranging from, we have uh, Lovine Angus cattle, uh, dairy cattle, goats, sheep. We actually just brought in a new flock of sheep yesterday um, to extend our flock a little bit more. Uh, so right now we're up to about 170 head of South Downs, for example. Um, we have a full farrow to finish operation with the pigs. Um, I think that covers most everything. We don't have any poultry. 
Uh, the alpacas. We, and do, have, oh, yes, the we alpacas have a couple and llamas, llamas and we a couple just, alpacas. We just had a baby Kriya this um, this past winter. His name's Anakin because his mom's name was Princess Leia. <laughs> so we had to stay with the <laughs> baby. Dr. Kern. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I figured as much. <laughs> the last, last year we went ahead, or two years ago, we had a um, actually a, a miniature mule that was born from our miniature donkey and our miniature horse. And Dr. Kearns, in all of his wisdom, named him Merck, after the Merck Manual, um, which is a veterinary book. So, um, he, and he was very, very cute. And he only stood maybe three foot tall, if that. Maybe. maybe. And he was just the cutest thing ever. So we have a wide variety. And I, I hope that all of you have had a chance to see the um, Beckett um, Animal Science Building, because it's 31,000 square feet. And that is huge. And every, um, whether it be a uh, veterinary school or uh, admission dean, they go out to the farm and they just literally look at our facilities and they're just amazed. Because um, I don't know of any, um, of course I'm a graduate of Ohio State and I was used to their <coughs> livestock facilities. But I'll tell you, we didn't get a chance to go out there very much because they were used for graduate research whereas ours are used specifically for undergraduates. And so you'll get as much experience and as much exposure out of the college farms as you want. Hey, Ben, I wanted to ask, um, what kind of clubs and organizations are you involved with on campus? On campus, some of the clubs and organizations that I'm involved with, um, I started out being involved with Pre-Vet Club. I'm not as involved now as I was my first couple of years. Um, I've focused more on doing some research, and also I have a about 20-hour-a-week job now. Um, my research was out at the farm um, with Dr. Whitaker. Uh, we did a swine behavior research uh, project, which I'm actually working on making my poster right now for our presentation in Des Moines, Iowa, a little later this month. Um, so that's all we get to go out there and present. You know, we've had our abstracts accepted and everything. That's the National Animal Science Conference, Correct. Isn't it? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, and then the, I also have a job as well out at the farm. Um, I was talking about the, the feedings that you guys have to do. Uh, for your second year here. Uh, I am one of the assistants who's in charge of those feedings. Um, so I help make sure you guys, if you have any questions, I can help answer them, just kind of help lead you guys. Again, for those people who have never done anything before, uh, just trying to help you. And uh, we want to make sure everything stays as, um, how do I say it? Stays as stays the same with every feeding. We have so many kids yeah, going has, out. It there. has remained yeah. constant. Yeah, constant. That's consistent. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Constant, <laughs> consistent. Yeah, that's um, all the words. We want everything to stay consistent. That way, the animals' diets don't fluctuate with every single every single meal. Um, so we try and help make sure that happens. So that's what I do for my job. Yeah, so. and I can tell you as a veterinarian, that's extremely important that animals get this, the same quality of care. You know, variety is the spice of life for humans, but not for animals. They, they like everything boring and the same. Same exercise, same feed, same water, same everything. Or so, lack thereof exercise. Or, yeah, yeah or, the, or the lack thereof. Yeah. Um, but for the most part... Um, you know, the students do go ahead and get the hands-on experience. And if you're out there, it's amazing what you can see. I was leading a, uh, I was uh, giving a tour to one of our um, previous alumni who is a graduate of Iowa State College of Veterinary Medicine. And she had not been here when the Beckett Building was actually um, filled with animals. And we were walking through the barns and we saw one of the um, Angus cows that was in labor getting ready to have her calf. And I, I turned to one of the students that are there and I said, did you guys see that cow in labor? But she had just started. So they said, oh, well, we'll go ahead and we'll tell either Dr. Kearns or Dr. Forshe, and who's in charge of basically helping with the livestock. They do the animal handling classes. And I, I talked to Dr. Forshe later and I said, did you, did you get that calf delivered okay? And he goes, shoot, by the time I got there, the calf was on the ground. So I just checked him over and he was fine. But the kids got a chance to observe that. And, and in the spring, we really do try to go ahead and have as much, well, I used to go ahead and fondly call the farm in the spring, barefoot and pregnant, um, where <laughs> we right have now. a lot of animals being born. And so, you know, the local grade schools love it because they come out and they get a chance to pet all the baby lambs and kids and, and baby calves. And so they have a great time. But it really does give you the hands-on, one-on-one um, 
handling that you maybe have never had before. Yeah. Anything that you have to add, Austin? Because yeah. obviously you came through the equestrian programs. Yes, I did have two years of the equestrian, and then I changed to animal science. So I did um, spend some time out at the animal science barn, too. Um, one of my favorite things about Finley was that just my relationships that I built with my professors, and that one-on-one, -on -one, um, our average class size is about 16. Um, so especially with those animal handling classes, mm -hmm. we try to stay, I think, around 10 students in each section. So you really get that one-on-one -on -one with the professors. But we may go ahead and go up to 20. Okay, you know, sure. But we try to go ahead and keep them right at that. But even then, in a class of 20, you'll have two or three upperclassmen that are working with that class in addition to the instructor. So in reality, you have an awful lot of, yeah. of first-hand, hands-on one, instruction. I know one to five or so. I yeah. Think. Yeah, absolutely. And I also had an internship or a job, you know, every summer that I was a student here at Finley. Um, so basically, I got those jobs from my professors. Um, we also have an office of internships, so a lot of helpful people around here to help you find whatever you're looking for. We have a question from Lenoria. I'm, I'm sorry if I said your name incorrectly, but um, she's asking if it's a good guess to say that most of the classes will be at the farm. Well. I would say that you have one or two classes per semester out at the farm, but understand that the, the uh, most, uh, most of the classes are going to be lecture classes, and so they're going to be here in maybe the Davis building or um, in one of the other um, buildings that are here, and so it, it's kind of divided, and, and we do go ahead, if, just in case you're wondering, we do provide transportation out to the farms. We have buses that run on a routine basis, so, um, you know, you don't have to worry about bringing a car, because, you know, it, it, it's great in the fall, but in the winter, cars are, can be an aggravation. Especially this winter. Yeah, especially this winter, where we've had more <coughs> below um, zero. zero temperatures than I've ever known. Um, as far as, I think we I think we have a question as far as second majors. Yes, yeah, Savannah's asking how strongly would you recommend adding the second major in biology? Um, what we try to do is that we try to give you the strongest transcript that you can get you know, when you graduate. And, you know, what we have found that, yeah, students love animal science, but sometimes they switch and they go into biology. I've had some of my students go on and do... Um, masters and PhD programs in genetics and biochemistry and you know having that additional biology enables you to do that um, you certainly do not have to but to be honest with you it it is really easy to get the second biology major because with all the biology that you take you're going to go ahead and only be about three classes or so away from the biology major. Three or four. It's not. It's really not any more than that. And I'll add something on that. Being a bio or dual major myself, not only on top of um, it only being a couple more classes, again, going back to talking about research, I feel like there were a lot more professors within the biology department who were starting new projects and had projects going that was easier for students to get involved in. Um, if you want to get involved in a research project, yes, there are some animal science. There are animal science mm -hmm. professors doing um, projects, but some of them have projects ongoing. They already have teams, etc. Um, while biology has a lot more projects going on, and you can easily get in with those um, with, with Dr. Walker, Dr. Wooten, some of the other people who are really, you know getting going with some of their new projects. So. Although Dr. Kearns, I know, supervises some research projects. I have two or two going right now with the Hancock Humane Society, um, looking at efficacy of different um, anthelmintics, in other words, wormers. Um, and so we we all go ahead. I guess what, what it's fair to say is if you come up with something that you're really interested in, we have to look at whatever professor has that expertise, maybe teaching courses in that area, and then we, we go in that direction. Um, Austin, we have a question for you. Piper wants to know how to sign up to register for classes. Great question, Piper. So basically, you're going to go on the website, and you're going to go to finley.edu, and then click Admissions, click on Freshman, and then you'll see important dates, question mark, on the left-hand side of the page. You're going to go ahead and click um, registration, and there should be an RSVP right there for you to pick which date you would like. Um, during registration, students will take placement tests. They will also sit down with a faculty member and make their schedule for the fall. 
Um, they'll also get their picture taken for their ID, get a parking pass, and get some other things taken care of. I'll tell you that as a um, someone who helps with a lot of the summer registrations, you want to go ahead and pick a date that is in as early a schedule as you can, simply because you're going to get the classes at the times you want them. Now, I will tell you that you will, even at that very last orientation, right before that can be really, really hectic, you will get the classes that you need. We do not, here at the University of Finley, allow students to be closed out of classes that they absolutely must have, particularly freshmen. Um, but on the other hand, you know, waiting until that time, you may go ahead and have like maybe two night classes. You know, and it, one may be a chemistry lab, certainly probably the intro to vet med class that I teach for all the freshmen animal science pre-vets kids will go ahead and, and be in the evening. But, you know, we're trying to go ahead and get you an optimal schedule. But unfortunately, we're like any place else. When the classes get full, we have to, we create more sections, but those sections are going to go ahead and be at times that, you know, um, are maybe not the most Ideal. Ideal for students. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, so, you know, I would encourage you to try to pick those earlier registration dates. The August one is... Um, That's the one I got. Trying. Freshman. You know, and sometimes when students are coming from long distances, we understand that. So, you know, we're not asking you to fly across the country and, and go through orientation and then fly back. You know, we understand that. But on the other hand, you know, understand that we will work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We'll try to get you the best schedule we can. Um, we also have another question from Lauren. Um, Lauren's asking, how important is it for her to know or have previous hands-on experience or job shadowing before she comes to Finley? Um, depending on which um, part of animal science that you're looking at. You know, certainly it helps if you have some um, experience as far as some observation time just to kind of give you an idea of what each part or which uh, um, strand of the animal science major is. But on the other hand, that's one of the things that we cover in the Intro to Vet Med class to go ahead and to help students understand how much experience they need, um, what types of experiences to get, um, and so we try to help you as much as possible. But if you are lucky enough to go ahead and to get veterinary experience, just make sure that you're keeping track of it just as far as where the dates, the hours, and maybe a, a little bit about what you saw because all of those dates that you have in high school, all those hours, will count toward the observation time that you need for veterinary school. We also have another question from Paige asking if the students get to be involved with the delivery of the babies. Maybe Ben can answer that? Um, yes, you do. As long as you guys are out there um, while it's happening. I know also there's a call list. Um, through, the, through the animal handling classes, there's a call list where as an employee out there, we will get called out in the middle of the night um, to if something is having a baby. And with that, then we will call the first person on that call list, and then it's their job to call the next two, their job to call the next two, and then if you want, you can come on out and check it out. If you want to, just hopefully you can get out there in time before everything is um, has lambed or kitted or calved. Um, if you're out there during your feeding and there's something having a lamb or a kid, then yeah, we gladly stop the feeding and everyone can come over and watch. We try not to be too invasive because obviously it's, we want to have as natural of a birth as possible. Um, but you can come over and watch. If you just want to pass by and look at it, then yeah, you can definitely do that. And then all the processing that we have to do of the lambs, um, we give the use some shots. We dip the lamb's navels in iodine. Um, we give them two of them some colostrum. We always get you guys to help with that as well. Um, so you guys are very involved in that, whether it be directly with the lambing um, or with the processing immediately afterwards. You guys are always involved in that. So yes, you do get to help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you have to understand that this is a female animal giving birth, and so you know <laughs> she needs a little bit of quiet, but on the other hand, we're one, of, we're one of the few institutions that we have mare watches and foal watches and calf watches and, and you name it. If you really want to get involved, you will. I mean, there's there's no ifs and buts about that. Um, Austin, could you tell us a little bit about some of the student services that are on campus? Sure. Um, so we do have an academic tutoring center, um, which I was a tutor there for nutrition and repro since I was a good student. 
um, took those classes as a freshman and a sophomore, and then as a tutor as a um, junior and senior. So definitely take advantage of those um, free services for students. We also have a counseling um, services as well, um, which is great. You know, sometimes students get stressed out or just need someone to talk to. So that's absolutely free for students as well. Um, we have an office of internships, which I did mention earlier. Um, we also have a health center on campus. So anything else that you guys can add? Oh, well, we have we have the Euler Success Center, which is a, an advising center that any time you have a question as far as um, and advising, whether it be adding a class, dropping a class, you have, are having trouble with an instructor, or you don't know how to go ahead and um, whether you should drop a class, um, add a class, just whatever. Um, in case you can't find your advisor, you know, they have someone who is there all the time that can go ahead and help you. And that is something that we've put into place the last couple of years and has, has been a real success and has really helped students. Because in that office, we also have Jan Taylor, who works in career services. And so let's say, you know, you're not sure that you're in the right area or, or you in the right area of study. She can go ahead and offer you some suggestions and go from there. Um, we also have a question. Savannah's asking if we have any plans to add poultry. Well, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, we do include um, some um, poultry um, medicine or poultry um, topics in some of the animal science classes. However, poultry is pretty specialized. Um, and so there isn't as much emphasis on poultry, but on the other hand, that is something that we in the animal science area have talked about as far as expanding. We have had chickens out at the university farm. Dr. Kearns used to go ahead and bring in um, chickens, and they would go ahead and, and raise them. Um, they do require special housing. Um, so um, we can go ahead and do that, and we have done it in the past. Um, but as a rule, usually um, I won't I won't lie to you and say that that's a big area of interest because it I, I should say it's not a big area of emphasis. That's what I want to say um, because of the fact that whereas we can go ahead and help you expand that, and we have a lot of um, producers that we can go ahead and help you get internships with, etc. Um, so we can help get you that. Um, type of, of experience, but I think that that I don't think we're known for poultry. I want to say so. No, no, not not yet. Maybe maybe in the future, and who knows? You might be able to go ahead and help us get started. So um, because um, I will say that one of um, um, our biology professors at, at the moment, she has chickens in her backyard, and she oh, brings eggs in, and she supplies them to several of the biology faculty. So to say that there's not chickens here, no, absolutely not. And of course, I grew up in a county, Mercer County, that had a very high um, poultry and chicken and, and turkey population. In fact, I really think there was probably more birds than there were people. But, you know, but certainly, you know, we did go ahead and have a lot of uh, um, poultry houses. Paige wants to know, um, do you guys ever work with like domestic animals like dogs and cats? Well, I'll go ahead and start. Certainly, um, as far as the uh, clinical internship that the kids can take, and as far as juniors and seniors, you can do small animal medicine as one of the emphases, small animal medicine or surgery. The pre-vet club does take as their service project the Humane Society. In the for Hancock County, and so some of the kids work out at the Humane Society um, because they're always looking for volunteers. We have helped them with numerous projects, whether it be the dog walk, um, dog palooza, which is another big event of theirs. Um, the kids actually go ahead and help raise funds for the Humane Society because they help call bingo on Monday nights, and so we have taken the Humane Society as our emphasis. But there is small animal medicine, there's a small animal uh, diseases class, we go ahead and have small animals covered in the reproduction class and the nutrition classes, and so we do have um, the emphasis there. However, the veterinary schools, when we started this program, asked us to make sure that students had large animal experience. I have taken the small animal medicine class, um, it was a lot of fun. 
Uh, it was a lot more hands-on than I actually thought it would be. We actually kind of behind some people's backs brought animals into the lecture halls a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we got, to do, like that. we got to do physical exams on them and everything. Um, so we didn't just have to sit there and study it and look at it on paper. We were actually able to do it on the animals. Um, and then we went ahead and then studied different diseases and stuff like that. And obviously we aren't going to bring in diseased animals into the lecture hall. So we didn't go that far. Um, but we got to study everything. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It, it fulfilled my satisfaction. Austin, Joseph has some questions about um, housing. Maybe you can just go, kind of go over how, what if they want specific housing? Great. So once you pay the enrollment deposit, basically I will send you a link to the Simple Campus Housing. You will from then um, have to create a login and a password. You'll need to sign up for a new account. Um, and then from there on that website, you can actually pick your top three housing preferences. So typically most freshmen are going to live in either Fox or Bear. They're co-ed by floor. Also, um, Lovett and Deming are the all-female dorms. So those are going to be the residence halls um, most freshmen will live in. Um, now, there are a couple more options once you're a sophomore and up, mm -hmm. like the townhouses, cottages, and group housing. Um, you are required to live on campus your first two years unless you're 22, married, veteran, or you live within 50 miles of campus mm -hmm. and you're a commuter status. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of upperclassmen that actually will live in the dorms because the dorms actually are, you know, they there are there's so many more housing um, <clears throat> arrangements now than when I when I first became so started with Finley and we'll just leave it at that. We won't say how long that's been. <laughs> another but, yeah, go ahead. Another option that becomes available to you guys after your freshman year is you, you can apply to be an RA. Uh, which is one thing that I did do my sophomore year. Um, an RA is resident assistant, which with that, it covers your room and board costs, so you get a free meal plan um, and free room. It's just in exchange for your work. And you are in charge of a group of houses or a floor on a freshman dorm. I personally was in charge of about 10 houses. Um, and so it was a great experience, a good resume booster for application to vet school. Um, I got asked a couple times about that in my um, interviews and just kind of lessons I learned from that. Um, so it's a really good way, again, if you don't want to have to put forth the money for that but are willing to put forth the effort, um, you can do that and say that's another option. With that, though, you don't specifically get to say where you want to go or where you want to live. Um, you put your top three options. And for me personally, I got my second choice, so I didn't get my first choice. One thing that you that Ben was speaking about that the veterinary schools wanted to see that was that no matter if you're looking at a job, you're trying to get into graduate school, professional school, schools and employers want to see evidence of leadership and the ability to go ahead and to um, mentor, to go ahead and to interact well, to work in a group, and certainly in the housing area, we you agree, Austin, that that uh, the RAs really do go ahead and get a chance to shine. So it's it's a really good uh, resume builder. But on the other hand, you know, the, the kids tell me that they they really enjoy that. Yeah. And we as RAs were required to have um, a bunch of programs for the residents. So really, um, especially those first couple weeks as a um, as a freshman, it helps you get involved. It helps you get uh, out to meet other people. So they can be a lot of fun. Sarah is asking a question. She's asking, um, are there any opportunities for companion animal handling or plans of adding this? As of right now, because of the housing um, situations that they would require, um, not so much, although certainly that's why one of the reasons why we have the Humane Society as our service organization because the kids work with those animals and they, they learn an awful lot of handling too. Um, I'm, I know that Dr. Kearns goes ahead and, and teaches a lot of um, types of, of animal handling, etc. Um, but and, and certainly we have toyed with that as of yet. We we just don't have the facility quite yet. Um, but uh, I have done large animal, small animal mixed practice, and so you know certainly uh, um, that would be certainly something that maybe we would look at in the future. Um, Tiffany's asking. She's like, what if you struggle with chemistry? Do you have any advice, like what she could do? If she struggles with that. <laughs> ben, <laughs> I can answer that one. Um, yeah. Go to the tutoring center. Um, I actually, in one of my interviews, I specifically got asked, "I see you struggled with chemistry. Please, you know, please tell us about this." Um, 
go to the tutoring center. It helps a lot. Find a group that you can study with. Um, this is what worked for me, at least. Um, don't be that nag that always goes and asks the kids who are the smartest in the class um, to do your homework or to help you with their homework, because everyone knows that help me with my homework means do my homework, and then I'm going to turn it in. <laughs> um, but show that you put forth the effort. Do what you can, and then be like, hey, can I meet with you? Even if, if it's a professor or a co-student, um, ask them if you can just kind of clarify things for me. Um, specifically, I know a couple of my uh, chemistry professors even gave us their cell phone numbers, so you they were always accessible, so you could get help from them with that. Um, but I often went to the tutoring center. I found that they were extremely helpful. There's chemistry tutoring every single mm -hmm. night. Um, you don't have to schedule it. It's just walk in. Chemistry and math and writing, I believe, are all yeah. three every yeah. single night. You can just walk in and get help whenever you want. You know, one thing that I have to emphasize is that so many times you guys are coming in and you're good students in high school, but what I find too many times, and, and unfortunately I saw it in myself, I saw it in my own two sons who went to parochial school and I thought they were prepared, but they weren't, um, as far as knowing how to study. You know, when, when high school comes easy, and, and I don't know if I'm talking to anyone listening, but on the other hand, you know, understand the best thing you can do is to learn how to study and, and not cram, not go ahead and sit down the night before the test and, and you know, look at it and, and the next morning get an A and then you probably forget it. No, these are subjects that you have to learn and be able to remember because every course builds on the next course. Now, when you say that you have, when you find chemistry difficult, I find that at least 80% of my kids find chemistry challenging. And that's not to say that they can't do it. It also has to be said that, you know, you can survive with a couple C's in chemistry and still get into veterinary school. All right? I'm speaking from experience because that's exactly, <laughs> yeah, you did. I know you did. Um, and I certainly was that way too. So, you know, Getting into professional school, yes, you have to have mostly A's and B's, but that does not mean that you won't have a couple C's. And a lot of times they're in the chemistry area. Um, but I can't advise. I can't just emphasize enough to you that good students go to the tutoring centers too. All right, and we have classes in learning how to study, in study skills. So there's everything that. We have the tools here. All you have to do is ask. You know, that, that's the one thing I want to emphasize to you. We can help. Lauren shows dairy beef cattle, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, dairy beef feeder calves. Dairy sure. <laughs> and um, she wants to know if we're involved with shows. We go ahead and, and show our Angus cattle. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, um, go ahead. Um, our show cattle team actually just got back from Denver not too long ago. Um, they take our low line Angus mm -hmm. out there. We don't have any beef feeders. Um, but we have our English show team that we um, that we show. Um, we've gone everywhere. This past year, we went to Louisville and Denver. Um, they take a few of the students out there. Um, they will fly you out there for that if you get accepted as one of the showers for that. Um, and you guys, if you're involved in the show cattle team, you'll talk to probably Chris Sprague, and he will uh, get you involved on a specific night of the week where you will come out and you'll do all the fitting, um, washing. Uh, blowing and everything of that of the cattle for that night um, and we have people come out every morning and evening during the time leading up to each show um, and then right before the show obviously we do all the clipping and you guys can come out and help with that as well uh, and then you can go to the Louisville Beef Expo or Denver um, and different people get to go to each one. Yeah so we, we definitely do go ahead and have kids that go ahead and get more show experience. So we also have a question from Savannah. She's asking about early acceptance into vet school and how that works. Early acceptance into veterinary school, number one, all schools go ahead and advertise it. They don't do it very often. Um, it's going to require students to have usually pretty close to a four point. They have to have so many hours of experience. Um, they may have to have a certain score on the GRE. They have to maintain certain grades as far as um, every year. So um, schools will use that as an admission um, 
Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to say that. Yes, an admission tactic. Let's go ahead and say that. But to be honest with you, I have worked with all, well, I've worked with 28 of the veterinary schools pretty closely, and they just don't take early admissions hardly at all. Uh, ben, so, let me find out who was asking. Um, Savannah was asking. Was it Savannah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're getting off track here. Um, it was asked if it was good to, to be involved with clubs. I would say yes, or if not specifically clubs, just be active. Show that you're using your time more than just sitting watching TV and playing video games. You want to be able to show that I did really good in classes, and I, was also, I also had a life. Um, I didn't just spend all my time okay. studying. Um, so whether it be clubs or with a job, um, or a research project, or all the above, um, it's, it's good just to stay involved. We, we go ahead and have so many students, because we're smaller, we, we have students that are very, in, very active in the music programs, um, whether it be vocal music or the various instruments as far as like the marching band, the um, um, wind ensemble, the, the choir, and the orchestras. So, you know, that is extremely important. Um, and one way that you can go ahead and excel in something that you are good at. There, we also have a lot of students that are student athletes. And, you know, that can really help a student stay focused because what I find with student athletes is that students tend to go ahead and give the same emphasis in the classroom as they do on the field. You know, a successful athlete will do that. And so, um, I have had students in let's see football, basketball, um, softball, baseball, um, diving, um, wrestling that have all been very, very um, active in um, athletics. Soccer is a little bit harder because it's a two-season sport, but that's not to say a soccer player couldn't. Um, it, but you just have to go ahead and be, you know dedicated and organized. I guess that's a good word because, you know, time management is a very important skill. And by the way, the um, academic support center can help you with time management too. Doesn't the, um, if you're involved with the choir, is there some kind of scholarship? Yes, there are, there are music scholarships that are, um, that are um, for animal science students um, in choir and in band, and it doesn't even have to be necessarily an animal science student. It is just music scholarships, and what it requires is for you to be involved in um, that particular, um, like marching band or or choir or um, one of the orchestras, and you need to take lessons, you know, in that particular um, area. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of scholarships in the music area. That's for sure, then. We also have a question about how many clubs and organizations that we have on campus. Maybe Austin, you have the answer for um, that? I have a whole yellow <laughs> title paper in the folder. Um, it basically is a front and a back of all the different clubs and organizations. I don't know the number off the top of my head. About se um, between 70 and 80? About 70 and 80 we have. Um, and you can actually create your own club. Um, at the University of Finley. You have to have a certain amount of people, um, make a constitution. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that hard. I, I actually, my freshman year, my buddy and I, I was a volleyball player in high school, and um, another friend of mine who I found here after running into him in chemistry lab and realizing that we played against each other in high school, uh, we wanted to make a club volleyball team, and we had everything approved. Um, we had an advisor. Everything was set to go, and then we realized with me being pre-vet and him being PT, traveling around for, um, and he had a job and I had a job as well, so traveling around for volleyball tournaments probably wasn't, shouldn't have been the first thing on our priority list, um, and a couple of our other teammates uh, were graduating that year, so it probably would have only lasted one year, so it ended up falling through the cracks, but everything was approved and it did not take us very long, it's pretty easy. Our lacrosse program actually started as a club sport, and it was started by a, a bunch of students who were interested in lacrosse. And so now we have men and women's lacrosse. Correct. So, you know, at, at, it, it certainly is possible. If you have an interest, you can go ahead and do it. And there's a new stadium coming in for their lacrosse team. Mm -hmm. That's right. Dr. Peck, <laughs> Cynthia is asking if, if she's unable to get into vet school, um, what kind of job opportunities are there for animal science? Well, you know, the animal science. The animal science area is a very 
broad-based area because you can go ahead and get jobs in um, managing a farm or a livestock operation. You could work in any aspect of agribusiness, um, which could be like if you're a writer and you're interested in animal science, you could write for one of the trade journals or one of the ag magazines, and we've had students definitely doing that. Um, I've had students this last year that have been working um, through a large um, feed um, company, Kalmbach Feeds, and they they have a lot of animals on. Um, contract and I've had several students start off working for them and they're working up the management trail so you know that certainly um, is a uh, really uh, a good avenue um, we've had students go ahead and work for pharmaceutical companies um, for feed companies um, in in any aspect of really animal science that you can imagine a lot of kids go on to graduate school because um, graduate school is well, it, it does have a lower GPA requirement than what veterinary schools are going to. Um, so we've had students very successful in that also. So for me to go ahead and to list just all the jobs you can get is almost impossible. I can give you a handout that's about 10 pages of front and back of all the different types of jobs that an animal science person is L can apply for and, and can do and and we certainly we talk about that in the um, one one the 110 class and also in um, their fresh in freshman classes because that that's an important thing we want you guys to know that because it's not just getting into a professional school we want you to graduate from from the University of Finley get into your profession get into your job and be successful at what you do that is what we want and if if you're a dual major, there's probably a pamphlet just as long for biology. Uh, oh yeah, there is. There jobs is. as well, so that really helps with your plan B. Um, if you don't get into vet school, the dual major really helps with that. Yeah, we've got a last call out for questions, but while we're waiting for some final questions to come in, we wanted to ask Ben, why did you choose UF? Why did I choose Finley? Mm -hmm. um, well, again, I said earlier how I really like the small town feel. Um, coming from the country outside of a relatively small town. Um, I didn't feel like going to a huge school, and I came for a visit um, after I had met Missy Edwards, who was at the time the admissions counselor at um, the Midwest Veterinary Conference in Columbus. Um, and I met her, talked to her. She was really nice. I actually met Dr. Beckett as well, um, and we. I then came here and took a tour, and I loved it. Absolutely fell in love, and um, really enjoyed the facilities out at the farm, um, and then. After also while I was at that conference, um, I was walking around talking to some other people, and um, I walked up with a Finley bag up to the Ohio State uh, vet school booth, and I asked them what they thought about Finley. And one of the professors right there actually said, "Well, I think Finley's the best place to go for undergrad." And so I said, "Okay, well, I guess I better go back and talk to her a little more." <laughs> and so I did, and that's when I scheduled the visit. Came out here and just liked everything a lot. I really liked the town too. Um, I wouldn't classify it as a college town, which fits me well, I think. Um, it's not like uh, everything revolves around campus. There's, there's a whole ton of industry here in Finley. So it's more of a real life scenario and not just a college life scenario. And I like that a lot more too. We also have a question from Lenore. She's asking about what student life is like living on campus. And um, student life here is a lot of fun. Um, I know. For example, I'm a very social person. I can practically talk to most anybody and get along with them. Um, and that worked to my advantage freshman year. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that worked to my advantage freshman year, making friends and everything. Um, and with that, my roommate and I, we would simply just walk down the hallway um, on the weekends and say, hey, who wants to go out and play basketball? Um, or who wants to go throw a frisbee? And we'd do that. And so everyone was really friendly. Um, again, I was talking about RAs earlier. Uh, they worked really hard to make sure everyone got out and had a lot of fun. Most people, when they aren't studying or in class, a lot of people like to go to the rec um, and just play basketball. Or, I mean, we have racquetball, pool, ping pong, really almost everything you can imagine. A climbing wall there actually just was built my freshman year. It's a great workout here. It really yeah. is, yeah. Um, so student life here. People were talking about, uh, we have a lot of concerts. We just had a new concert that came in not too long ago, Plain White Tees. Um, I did not go. I was busy working that night. Um, but 
there's a lot. Of, the, Everyone does a lot to make sure the students stay involved. Our student activities office is extremely active, and it's it's ran by students, and so they bring in all kind of activities and 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 speakers and just you know we've had hypnotists and and comedians, comedians and and you name it. I mean, we've had the Toledo Symphony come down, and students have free access to those types of concerts, and it, it's just really really great. Another big thing is our basketball team right now. Um, tomorrow we'll add, we play in the GLIAC quarterfinals, um, and so a lot of people usually like to go for that. I know my roommate's actually coming back from Cleveland tomorrow just to go to that game. Um, so especially our men's basketball team, a lot of people do go to the girls' team games as well. Um, especially the men's team, we uh, really support them, and that's a lot of fun for students. We're ranked fourth in, in the Midwest region, so that's good. Um, one thing that... Lauren was asking how many students are. Oh, that's major. right. I'm I'm so sorry. I forgot. Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, we have about three hundred and um, probably about three hundred and ninety animal science majors. Of those, a lot of those are pre vet majors. I think at, at the last probably about three hundred and and fifty were animal science pre vet majors. Um, and remember that a lot of those are are biology majors. Um, so you know we do we do go ahead and we have a very very active um, major and, and because of that you know with the pre vet club and of course I advise the pre vet club um, we have a lot of admissions counselors that come from the various veterinary schools that recruit just from us um, Missouri Kansas um, Iowa sent a couple students Cornell sent a couple students um, Ohio State is is running a um, Skype. Um, session um, pretty soon, so um, they're going to go ahead and be doing that. Um, Purdue has went ahead and been here in previous years. Lincoln Memorial, Ross University, St. George's from both of those from the Caribbean. Um, Michigan State ha has been in, in contact with this. Don't forget Kansas. Oh, I, I did see the Kansas. <laughs> oh, Kansas that, comes sorry. every other year. Okay. Um, <laughs> but on the other hand. Veterinary schools come and and not only that, but we have some graduate programs that come too, like um, Dr. Hoyt from the um, Veterinary Public Health Program um, at Ohio State. They have a really nice program that combines really well with veterinary school. He comes every year and he really likes our students. So you know, we we are known for having the quality students that we do that have the proper combination of advising of hands-on and academics so they're going to do well in school. So I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we get ready to wrap up here, um, I want to let make sure that everybody knows that this session is recorded so you can um, go back and, and get your questions answered again, or I should say refer back to your questions. And then also, if we didn't answer anything very specifically, we're going to have Austin review the questions so that way she can pers personally and, and better answer your questions. But um, what I'll do is I'm going to start with Ben and we'll go down the row and I want to ask you what do you like best about being an oiler? What do I like best about being an oiler? Uh, just the way it really it prepared me uh, for application to vet school. Um, it, all the way from everything being hands-on, uh, that's probably what appealed to me the most and what I liked the most um, to professors and faculty always being very accessible uh, and willing to help me out at a moment's notice. Uh, and so that's what I like the most. What I like about being an oiler, um, I have been f a full-time faculty member since 1980, and so I've been here a long time, and many faculty have been here, and so we know each other. It, it's a sense of, of family, but yet, you know, we're, we're Experts in our fields, we know what we're what we're talking about. We work well with students, and we work for our students. I understand we're here for our students, and so therefore, um, just the interaction between faculty and staff and students—that's what I really, really like as far as being an oiler. 
um, for me, you know, as a student, basically, like Ben said, the hands-on, um, and I always tell students that what you put into it, it's what you're going to get out of it. So if you, you know, want to learn as much as you can and you um, take advantage of all the opportunities here, you're going to, you know, get so much out of your time. Um, and then as a staff member, you know, I still talk to a lot of my professors, advisors, um, and I still participate in a lot of events and activities. So it really is kind of a family. And I've met um, so many people from all over the U.S. just because people come from, you know, California. I have friends in California and New York. So <laughs> yeah. it's just like when you graduate, you have people from all over. So and I just want to say one more thing. Um, we have our open house equine pre-vet days mm -hmm. coming up soon. Um, the first one is March 21st. And the second one is April 25th. They're both Fridays. Um, you'll hear from current students. There'll be a student panel. You'll hear from faculty members. Um, you'll get a tour of all the facilities, animal science and equestrian, and also have an information session with admissions. And lunch. They can still probably make reservations for those, Yes, right? they can. Yep, they're on the website. You can RSVP, or you can call the admissions office. So that's all we have. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate it. It was nice talking to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you later.